Today we're making Christmas door decor, a wreath and a swag. Keep watching. I'm Brandy and this is Making It My Own DIYs. We're going to do the wreath for the first one. So we're going to get this beautiful sign from Dollar Tree or any sign you like. I have a wreath form from Dollar Tree. It is the 18 inch. I have a big roll of this deco mesh. I think it is a 24 inch. I cannot tell you how much is on there, but you can figure the feet out. I have some gold paint, a variety of textured ribbons. I have this gold, but you can get um, like a red at Dollar Tree, similar to it. Then I have two wired ribbons. I'm gonna add um, some paint to this ring here. Just because the main metal tones are gonna be gold because that's what's on the edges of the ribbons. I want to make sure that everything matches. Pipe cleaners are going to go on our wreath form to hold our deco mesh down. I've done this type of a wreath several times so this is not going to be anything new to you if you've been here a while. If not, I'll explain it to you. So we're going to have 16 pipe cleaners. We're going to do the cross sections which is the middle section of each one and then we're going to add one to the outside or the third ring there. When I go across here, I wrap it across the center section right around the middle so it kind of locks it in place. Now keep going around. If you're gonna use a white deco mesh, you probably wanna use a white pipe cleaner so that you don't see it. Whatever matches would work, kind of blends together. So to keep that from moving, if it bothers you, just add a little hot glue on either side and let it dry. And this is what it looks like when you have all 16 pipe cleaners on it. The next step is to take our deco mesh and bunch up the last few ends of it in your hand. So it doesn't matter if it's kind of raggedy looking. You're going to bunch it up and begin placing it down on the wreath. Some of this will be a little bit out of your camera range here, but I'm going to try to make up for it. When I move around, you'll be able to see a little bit better. So you're just gonna twist that in. You can start wherever you like. I like to start on the middle ring. Then you're going to just take and bunch up a section and we're gonna make these sections into, what did I do, a 10 or 12 inch. And then we're gonna continue around back and forth. So we'll go from the outside to the inside to the outside to the inside with the same size poofs all the way around. You can use a cutting mat with measurements if you wanna do it that way or you can just kind of uh, use your ruler like I'm doing. I wanted to use the ruler so I could show you if you don't have a cutting mat or one of those marked little uh, tables, you can do it this way. Bunch it up and then tuck it down into the next one. So I know I'm a little out of range here, but you get the idea. It's very easy. You just pull your loop or your little um, poof, you pull it out you measure it, you tack it down. Same thing, put it out, measure it, and then tack it down to the next one. You wanna make sure you don't miss any, keep going. It's gonna get kind of crowded, but that's okay. That's what you want. Also, I might add, if you wanna spray paint your wreath form, you can, but if you get it full enough, you're not gonna be able to see it. Right now, you will see it, but don't be alarmed because you can cover that up. So we're gonna go all the way around back to that same place where we started from, and I had just a tiny bit left. So I'm just going to trim off what was left on that roll. This is just leftovers. That's why I really can't tell you how big that roll was, and I got it at the thrift store. You can take that section and tuck both of those pieces down on the inside, and they'll be out of the way. I decided to use some of this red burlap that came from Walmart. I got it on clearance several years ago and I had a couple of rolls left. I'm almost done with them now. And I'm just going to add that down. I'm going to do it on the other side. You don't want to put everything in the same starting point because um, you might run out of pipe cleaner when you're twisting it down. Plus, you don't want anything to get too bulky on one side. So just to keep it all nice and slim, we're gonna keep going around this way. Now this is the same exact thing that I did with the white poofs that we used, but I'm just going to be using the burlap this time. So I'm gonna measure out 
how much I need. So there's my 10 inches, squish it up with my fingers, pull it down to the next one. So now I'm on the outside, the next one will be on the inside, then the outside, then the inside, until you get all the way back around. I used more than one roll of this. I used a one complete roll and then I used a section from another roll. Are we getting the idea here? You see how we're doing it? And don't be afraid to move that stuff around and get it out of your way so you could put your next layer down. Squeeze it in there and wrap it tight. So here is where I ran out, but I still had a little space there where I needed some burlap. So what you're gonna do is just bunch up the new roll, the new piece you're gonna put down. I'm just going to keep that little end in place unwrap it a little bit without letting it pop out put the other one on top press it down and twist it in now you can just keep going make your 10 inch pull it into your next pipe cleaners and then tighten it down i hope y'all been enjoying all the wreath videos so many for christmas and it has been a lot of fun doing them so this is what that tag looks like. I found it on the floor. <laughs> okay. So now you can just cut off that extra piece. It's not going to be any problem sticking out on the side. You can tuck it in if it bothers you. And we're going to begin to fluff this out. I'm going to pull the white section to the inside and the red to the out. Then I'm going to move the white to the outside and the red to the inside. It's going to be sort of back and forth. Back and forth. Like the red is kind of woven through the white but it's different textures, and I think it really gives a little more interest than using all deco mesh. But if you don't have burlap rolls, you can always use another color deco mesh and get pretty much the same look. You know, if you use a smaller one, if you use a bigger one, then it's gonna be a lot thicker, the wreath will be. So continue around like this until you get it all the way fluffed out. Now we're going to start on our ribbon stacks. So I'm going to start with the holly and we're going to do 12 inches. I'm going to need 16 of these. And be sure that you dovetail your ends, make them nice and neat. And then it's where I decided I wanted to add the green burlap over there. You can see that those rolls are from Dollar Tree and it took two rolls to do it. And you're going to have 16 of each ribbon pattern that you chose. And then we're gonna start stacking them up. I'm just going to make like an X and then another X right on top of it. Then you can kinda walk your fingers and squish toward each other until you get the little bundle in the center and keep your little ribbon straight. You know, you can pull them around in your hand gently. And then you can start placing those down. Each place that there is a pipe cleaner, you will have a ribbon stack. You can mix these up. You can change your, um, the pattern that you use. So if you want to do your green and gold next to each other, you can do that. However you like it, you can do it that way. And I do like to use different sizes of ribbon too. It just gives it a little more interest. If you make these ribbons much smaller, they're going to sink down into your wreath and you won't notice them as much. So for the 10 inch poofs, I'm doing 12 inch ribbon strips. Just to give you an idea, if you want to scale down, you can. I'm going to walk these toward each other, my little thumbs and fingers, till I hold them in my hand. And I have little hands, and if I can do it, I know you can. Then I'm going to press it down in here. Now you can do these one by one like I'm doing them, or you can pre prepare them in advance with little clips and just put them off to the side and then start adding them when you take the clips off. Whatever's easier for you, that's how you want to do it. So is everybody finished with their Christmas crafting? Is everybody done with that? Are we still working on Christmas crafts? Are we still looking to watch Christmas? I'm curious to know. Okay, so now we still, these are all going to be fluffed out now and you're gonna see the big difference. Pulling them out, you, they have wire in them. Um, one of my ribbons does not. That gold mesh does not have wire in it, but it'll stay up on its own. It's really lightweight. 
fluff them out, curl them under, move them around a little bit as far as moving the tails back and forth. And you can go ahead and cut off your pipe cleaner. If there's any question in your mind, go ahead and give it one final wrap before you trim it off so that everything stays locked into place. You don't want it to fall apart once you start fluffing. And if you cut them too small, they just might come apart. Same thing here. I'm gonna leave just a tiny space there before where I've twisted it because I, again, don't wanna cut into the twist because it will fall out. So just go above it. And this is why I say to use white. You could also use red here if you wanted to, whatever coordinates. But you definitely wouldn't want a purple in there because it wouldn't match, right? So now look at it once it is nice and fluffed. You see that? Big difference. You really have to touch every piece of that ribbon. Bend them, twist them, make it intentional. Now we're going to work on this sign a bit. So it's got this MDF, which is how it's made, but I want to take this Snow White and put it right over the edges. You can see my camera is rocking. I had some complaints my last video that my um, they can't see the entire project. However, if you wait to the ends of most of my videos, you can get a good look at them. Um, but I'm trying to accommodate a little bit, but you should see how I have this camera rigged up. It is crazy business crazy. It's like the Leaning Tower of Pisa over there. But I'm hoping that Santa Claus will bring me a new tripod so that I can get way above my table and you can see every single bit of everything I'm doing. I do try to, to show you though what I'm doing. So I've stapled the pipe cleaners on the back and then I'm going to thread them through. The wire frame that is underneath, I'm not going to pull tight because it will sink down into it. I don't want to squish down my puffs. So I'm just going to pull it enough that it just sits in the top. I'll do that to the top and the bottom. So this time I'm going to show you the reveal of this one first. This is how this beautiful wreath looks. I didn't add a bow. I didn't add any extra embellishments on it because I think with the holly and the busyness of the ribbon that it just it looks gorgeous together, just like this. I think this would be a beautiful hostess gift if you wanted to make a wreath like this to give to someone. Maybe you didn't cook the meal, but somebody else put in all that effort. What a wonderful way to say either Happy Thanksgiving, I appreciate the hard work, or for Christmas, thanks for all that you do. Something like this would be really nice, in my opinion, as a gift for somebody for that. Because if it brings you joy, it's going to bring them some joy too. The next project is going to be a swag, and we're going to use the Dollar Tree Christmas trees for this. You can use white or green, depending. Then I'm going to use a beautiful pick that I got when I was thrifting. It's got a little snow on it. Then I've got some poinsettia varieties here, a bunch of different ones that coordinate. I have some snowflake ribbon. Some of this beautiful ribbon that I got from Hobby Lobby, and this one too. This is gift trim, but it's actually, it works totally fine in crafting as well. This is a beautiful velvet green. So stunning, the color is so rich. So we're gonna start by taking those trees out. You can start by taking, you can put aside the stands because you're not gonna need those. Throw them away or save them for another project. I always trash them, believe it or not. I save everything, but I trash those. And then just start, lay it flat on the table and then pull them out. You wanna pull all these little pieces out because this is going to almost take the place of a pipe cleaner and that you will be using these limbs to hold it down. Open up both the trees the same way. I'm cutting off these crazy extra long tips that I have no idea why they are made that way, but that's beside the point. Once you get those flipped out, you can put one on top of the other and you're gonna stagger it down this is how I've, you've seen me make them in the past, but I have also made one like this, like the snowflake wreath. Now, I, can, I know you can't see right now, but you want to go down about five or six inches from the top of the other one and connect these together. You're going to see in just a minute what I'm talking about, and this will make a 20-inch swag. So you're going to just use some pipe cleaners and attach the poles that are in the center together. 
So the back one and the front one are attached. And the same here. You can see that it's pushed down further than the other one. And then you can just make sure that you have pretty much equal amounts on either side. You're going to use your pretty greenery to go on top of this, so you don't have to worry as far as how it looks. But you do want to have your pieces out where you can use them to hold your things into place. So that's what I'm doing here, trying to make it kind of even. Now you can see it in its entirety. And that's about a 20 inch swag. And this is a teardrop swag. I'm going to cut off the pieces that I like best and I really am favoring the snowy pieces because I think it's going to look really good with the snowflake ribbon that I chose. Then we're going to start laying down pieces of the pick. This is not a huge swag so I need to cut my pieces down so that they're manageable. I want them to be a little wider than the swag to give it a little more oomph, to give it a little more body, to make it a little bit larger. So you're just going to place your pieces down. I like to kind of overlap my stems on the bottom and then twist a piece or two around it. You can use one and make it like a circular kind of thing where it locks in, or you can use two different pieces like you would with the pipe cleaner. I'm going to go down to the center section of the wreath and add another one on the right and on the left. If you're concerned about this coming loose, feel free to either use pipe cleaners or use a little hot glue to hold it together. Then we're going to go down here on the last third of it. I'm going to put one off to the left and one off to the right. So far, this is how it looks. And then we're gonna add one more down here to the bottom. And again, I want it to overlap the kind of cheaper looking greenery that is underneath. But you see how nicely the branches from the Christmas tree holds everything into place? You can watch my videos Mondays and Thursdays at 5 p.m. Central Standard Time and it is completely free. Here are the ribbons. I love these Hobby Lobby ribbons. I got them on sale for 60% off when they were 60% off. I'm gonna layer these up. I just chose to put the silver on the bottom and the green on top. I'm gonna pinch them together. And then starting on the bottom, I'm gonna pull out a branch. Yeah, I'm making sure I get the right branches in there. And I'm going to wrap them around tightly so that my ribbon does not come out because you know we have to fluff, right? You know this already. If you come to my channel, there's gonna be some fluffing going on. So we're gonna do eight inch little sections here. Eight inch little, almost like a poof, I guess you could say. Because we're gonna make the section and then we're gonna make sure that it is kind of like four inches up from there. It's going to have a little, a bend. So it's going to be almost as if it was woven through the greenery. And probably the way I'm phrasing it is not near as good as you just watching how I do it. You can see here. And this is another one of those things that definitely is not hard. People say, I cannot make a wreath. I cannot do it to save my life. You can. You just have to believe that you can do it. Find the pieces that you really like and then start doing it. If you need to use that ruler to help you make sure that you have the right size measurements so that your sides are even, go ahead and do that. And this way I have the same amount on each little loop. So we're almost through with this one side. My last little loop is going to go over and into the center. And then I'll lock it down. Now because this has a pattern that goes in a specific direction because of the wording, rather than going all the way around in continuous motion, I decided to go back down to the bottom and start on that side. Now if you have a ribbon that's maybe say a plaid or that has a pattern that's all over the place without writing, then there really is no top or bottom. So you would not have to worry about doing this. You could just continue all the way around 
uh, almost like in an oval rather than starting back over on the bottom. But it's, you know, it's fine. Either way, totally up to you. Whatever's easiest, as I always say, whatever's best for you is going to be the best you can do. So keep going up here. Wrap them around. And you'll notice I'm, go I'm, I'm trying to get it toward closer to the outside of the wreath. The inside of the wreath is where we're going to put our beautiful poinsettias. So there needs to be like a little spot in there where there is nothing else there. It's going to be a little nest for them. So now we're back to our starting spot. I'm just going to cut that off, leaving a little bit extra there, and then start pulling these apart. And just like with the wreath, you want to just kind of pull these out, alternate. So we have the silver on the inside, keeping the green right in the middle, and the wording on the outside. And then you can just alternate back and forth, or if you prefer to do all of it in one direction, you can do that too. Whatever tickles your fancy. I'm so glad everybody is loving the Victorian video. I have gotten so many kind comments, and I really appreciate the encouragement because it is a little bit out of my wheelhouse, and I'm really trying my best to, to bring y'all some different things because I have lots of viewers, and everybody has different tastes, right? And I'm not saying that any style or fashion is wrong, so I want to be sure that I can show you uh, different options. Maybe you don't know what your style is or what you like. Well, maybe you watch some of my videos and you find out what you like. And then I'll help you make those things. So these beautiful, beautiful flowers have clips on the back. So all you have to do is clip them on. I know Dollar Tree carries some that you can clip on. Mine actually came from the thrift store. You know, I always say it. It is all, it's the truth. Believe it or not, it is the truth. Now I'm dovetailing my ends and just cutting these beautiful green pieces into little slants. And we're going to cover up the top bar that is sticking out with this green ribbon. I'm just going to add some hot glue on here, pick it up and put it on the underside of that stem or the pole, whatever that is, pinching it together so that it, you know, kind of clings to the outside there. Then go on over the top. I'm going to do the same thing. Leave a big section in the middle because this is going to be our hanger. You're going to push this around and squeeze it tight. Now we're going to make a bow to go on the bottom. So we're going to pinch up the tail here. It's going to be 12 inches. And then we're going to do 12 inch sections that are going to give us six inch loops. So go there to the 12 grab it in your hand then you can go and i'm measuring to make sure it's the right size and it looks like that's going to be the perfect size it shouldn't overwhelm the swag won't be too ginormous and for those of you who don't like bows feel free to just leave this off put something else down there so i'm going to use a clip to hold it in place while i work on the next one i'm going to again get a 12 inch tail then i'm going to have six inch loops And I have a bow video and I have all kind. you've seen me do all kinds of bows. If you prefer a different bow for this, you just go right ahead and do it. All right, so the green, we're going to make a little bit smaller. We're going to do a 12 inch tail, but we're going to make these 10 inch pieces. Because the green does not have wire, it's a little on the floppy side and I don't want it to look sloppy. Floppy is okay if it's intentional. I don't want it to be sloppy. So now I'm going to cut the other tail about the same length. Then we're going to add this to the silver and to the green. And then I'm going to add my pipe cleaner to the back. And a zip tie. Now this is going to keep it in place. And it is going to allow us to attach the bow down to the swag with the pipe cleaner that I actually remembered to use this time. Can I get a thumbs up for that? Yes, I remembered it. By the way, if you're watching this on Thanksgiving, very happy Thanksgiving to you. I don't expect a whole bunch of views on this video today because I know a lot of people are spending time with their family. But you know what? I went ahead and did the video because not all of us have family or a place to go. And this way, you don't feel like you're alone. So I hope it helps. I hope it helps somebody. hope it brings a little bit of joy to you today. All right, again, I cut the green at a slant, and then these other ribbons I'm going to cut with a dovetail. Fluff it up nicely. 
And look at this gorgeousness. Isn't it pretty? We have a hanger. Our beautiful bow and those showstopper poinsettias. They are stunning. One more look at the swag. If I seem to be going too fast for you, feel free to find your pause button and pause, and you can also do a screenshot if you would like to do that. I'm enjoying crafting and getting to know all you guys. It has been such a pleasure, and I really hope if you have not subscribed that you subscribe to my channel because we have the most fun on this channel. And I'll be back next week with some more giveaways. Thanks for stopping by. I'll see you again soon. Bye.